What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use virtual environments in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to talk about virtual environments today. And the first question that comes up naturally is what are virtual environments and why should we use them? And the answer to that question is quite simple. Virtual environments allow us to use multiple Python versions and multiple versions of different packages at the same time. So for example, you might have many different projects going on and you need one version of NumPy in project A and another version of NumPy in project B. Now, if you don't have virtual environments, what you have to do is you have to uninstall one version of NumPy in order to install another version of NumPy, whether that is older or newer version doesn't really matter, but you can only have one version installed at the same time. So this is true for NumPy, for Pandas, TensorFlow, all the packages that you have, have a certain version. If you want to have an older or a newer version, you need to replace the version that you currently have, unless you work with virtual environments. So if I have only one environment, no virtual environments, I have one Python version, and I have one TensorFlow version, one Pandas version, one NumPy version, and so on. And if I work on different projects that are based on different versions, for example, some libraries use TensorFlow, but they only work with an old version of TensorFlow. So I would have to use the older version of TensorFlow if I use that specific library. But in another context, I want to have the most recent version of TensorFlow. This is a conflict. So what makes sense in this case is to create multiple virtual environments for the individual project. So for project A, I'm going to create a virtual environment with an older TensorFlow version and my special library. And in project B, I'm going to use another virtual environment that is independent from the first one. And there I have the most recent TensorFlow version. That's the basic idea. We have different packages, different versions of packages, and even different Python versions across different environments. This works for uh, Anaconda environments as well. But in today's video, we're not going to call we're not going to talk about Anaconda environments, we're going to talk about basic Python virtual environments. And before we get started, one thing that is also an additional benefit of virtual environments is that we have uh, actually an isolated environment. So if you are a Python programmer, and if you program Python on a regular basis, you probably have a bunch of pip packages installed already. So you have pillow, you have OpenCV, you have uh, maybe one of my modules bitstream or something like that. Um, and all these are already there. So if you for example, create a new Python package or an application that you want to publish on GitHub so that other people can download it and you want to have a requirements file, you don't know for sure if you have some packages that are used by that program or by that package, and you just forgot about them because they're so obvious. Uh, it's so obvious for you that they're going to work because you have them all the time, you don't have to install them but maybe you forget to add them to the requirements file. So what would make sense is to create a fresh, new, clean environment to try to install the package there and to see what the requirements are when you develop the package to only install the things that are needed for that particular package so that you see in this isolated environment, I can use my package, then to create a requirements file, and then to upload that to uh, whatever you want to upload it to GitHub or the, the pip uh, packages uh, website or repository. So we're going to learn how to do all of that today. And we're going to start by creating a simple virtual environment. For that, we need to open up the command line. And we need to install the tool that allows us to create virtual environments. And this is virtual env. We need to type pip install virtual env like this. And this is going to create uh, this is going to download the virtual env tool here. Now, chances are you have to restart your command line. But then once you have done this, you should be able to use the virtual env keyword, you can see here we get this usage. If you are on Linux or Mac, I think you need to do something else. So I have the Windows subsystem for Linux here. Um, now this is actually not what I'm looking for. Let me open the Windows terminal. There you go. Um, so I think on Ubuntu, we need to type sudo apt install and then uh, Python three dash virtual env. And then I think still we need to install after that uh, pip three install virtual env, but then you can use it there as well. And once you have this tool installed, creating a virtual environment is quite simple, we open up the command line on Windows here again, uh, we go to the desktop, for example, and here I'm going to create now a new virtual environment, I'm going to say virtual env, and then I'm going to say I don't know, my project a or something like this. And this creates now a new virtual environment It's going to take some time here, you can see created virtual environment. Um, and 
then what I can do is I can go into that. So I can go into that directory. This is a simple folder. So I can go change directory my project A. Um, and then in here, I have now a bunch of files, I have the scripts, for example, and what I need to do now to enter that virtual environment is I need to activate it. So I need to go to scripts, and I need to run the activate bat file in this case. So I say scripts, and then backslash activate, I think I can just run activate. Uh, otherwise, there's also activate .bat. Uh, for a batch file. And now we can see here, I'm in that virtual environment. And how can I notice that I'm in that virtual environment? First of all, I can type pip list. And I can see that the packages that I have installed here are just three packages, pip setup tools and wheel. Those are the three packages that I that I have now in this virtual environment, which means that if I create now a Python file that uses numpy, and I try to use numpy here, it's going to say numpy is not installed, you need to first install it. So I can go ahead and say pip install numpy, for example. Um, and then it installs numpy here. After some time now, if I type pip list, you can see I have NumPy installed here as well with the version 1.2, uh, 1.22.4. And then I can deactivate that environment. Again, I can say scripts deactivate BAT. And now I'm outside of that, um, outside of that environment again. And if I now say uh, pip list, you will see all the libraries that I have in my base Python installation. This is not in the environment. Now this is outside of the environment, all the modules that I have. So now what I can do is I can also go ahead out of this directory and say again, virtual and my project B. And then I can go to my project B and I can say scripts, activate, and I can say pip list. And here you're going to see that we don't have all the packages. And we also don't have numpy that we had in my project A. But now I can go ahead and say, for example, pip install numpy and then equals equals. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to find a version that actually exists. Uh, what was the version of the previous one? Okay, it's no, lo no longer listed here. But I think it was one was it 22. Uh, let's go with 120. Zero. Maybe we find it there you go, it downloads now an older version of numpy. Um, and then if I type pip list, you can see uh, that we have here 1.20 installed. Now we can go ahead again, scripts deactivate, then back my project a scripts, activate, and then pip list, you can see 1.22.4. So this works, obviously, and we can also see that uh, we're using a different pip. So if I type on Windows, what was it? Where was the command, I think, where pip you can see that the pip that it's using first here is in my project scripts pip dot uh, whereas if I change now, so if I say scripts, deactivate, and then I type where pip, uh, this, um, this here is the pip that I'm using by default. So in the Python directory. And of course, if I go into my project B, I'm going to see that it uses the local pip there as well. Now, before we move on to the to the second thing that I want to show you here how to create a requirements file, I want to show you how all of this works on Linux as well. So we already talked about the installation, we just type um, sudo apt install Python three virtual env and then pip install pip three install uh, virtual env as well. And then we have virtual env here um, as well available. And I'm going to go here now to C or actually mnt C users my user and then desktop. And here I'm going to say now virtual env test env, and then this is going to create now my new virtual environment take some time again. Then I can go in there. And on Linux, this is a little bit different, because now we don't have scripts, we have bin. And what I have to do to activate it is I have to say source, and then bin slash activate. And then I have this environment activated here in my uh, Linux subsystem, but also in original in, in native Linux systems, this will work. And then I can do the same thing pip three list. Uh, and hopefully, we're going to see yeah, that we only have these three libraries installed. And I think here the command is which so which pip three shows us that it uses the local pip three that we have in this package here. So this is how that works. 
Uh, now, in order to actually remove, in order to delete an environment, all we need to do is we need to delete the directory. So we basically go here and delete these folders. And now we don't have the virtual environments anymore. They're gone. We don't have to execute a specific command. Now, maybe I have to close the command line here. Uh, to be able to delete it. But that's it. We don't need to do any fancy uh, virtual and remove or something like that. We can just do it like this. And now one more thing I want to show you here is uh, we can use the so called pip freeze command to create a requirements txt file to get only the packages that are available locally in that environment. So again, I'm going to create a new environment here, my project, and I'm going to go into that. So I'm going to go into the directory, I'm going to say scripts, activate and then I'm going to say pip install numpy. Then I'm going to say once this is done. What is a small library that I can use? I hope pillow is small pip install pillow. Uh, and of course, you can do that with all sorts of different versions, right? So I can say, okay, I want to have numpy 1.20 or something like that. And then once I'm done, I can do pip freeze and pip freeze. If I run this, you can see this gives me the strings that we have here. Those are just the packages that we installed extra. This doesn't list all the packages that we have like pip and all that, but only the ones that I installed in addition to the basic libraries that are installed by default. And I can also say pip freeze uh, local dash dash local. In this case, it's the same uh, output, but you might want to do that to limit really the the pip freeze command to the local environment. But once you have that, you can just say pip freeze dash dash local and then this uh, greater than symbol and then requirements dot txt. And then you can add that to your uh, to your GitHub file or to your GitHub repository. So if I open this here, you can see now this is in a file. And this is what you see in all projects you see in Python projects, you have a requirements txt file. And then you can just look at the different versions that we have here. Um, and this is how you can do that in a virtual environment. So if you're working on a package, if you're working on a project, you want to publish on GitHub, for example, it makes sense to work in a virtual environment to do everything. And then in the end to say pip freeze local requirements txt, and then essentially you have your requirements txt file automatically. So to to summarize everything here in a nutshell, virtual environments allow us to use different packages, different package combinations, different package versions for different projects. And they make it just easier to work um, on multiple projects at the same time. And this is something that a lot of people do whenever you start a new Django application, whenever you start a new video game that you develop in Python, whenever you start a new data analysis, you create your own virtual environment, you can do that either with this tool, you also have other tools, you have Anaconda with Conda environments and all that, which is more data science focused. Uh, but that's the basic thing that you need to know for now. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 